dependability and commitment is reliability. You are not reliable if you uh, are not committed. So responsibility is such a, an important thing in the life of men. Because to whom much is given, much is expected. So leadership is commitment. So to be a leader, to be a leader, a father is a leader. To be a leader, you have to lead, you have to protect, and you have to provide. So not every boy is a man. Not every man is a father. So you can be an husband and not a father. You can be an husband and just a boy. You can be an husband and you are just a man. So, to be a father does not necessarily mean that you have children. So, if you are not a real father, yes, you are just like a donor. So, to be a father does not necessarily mean that, oh, I have children, I have this. In fact, if you are married, you're supposed to be a father because your first child is your wife. Amen? Just the same case for a woman, a mother. Your first child is your husband. That is how it's supposed to be. Now, I believe today I am talking to Christians, believers, those that have given their life to Christ, those that have accepted Christ as Lord and Savior, those that have their faith in what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary to take away all our sins and to make us to become a brand new person and preparing us for eternity with him. I'm talking to people like that. People that have put their hope in Christ. Christ accomplished work on the cross. People that have repented of their sins. Those are the people I'm, thinking I, I'm talking to today. If you are not one, you can, be, you can make yourself to be one. So, uh, the Bible put it this way, Genesis chapter 2, verse 24. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. This is only for a father. Not necessarily a husband, because there are some husbands that are still sucking their mother's breast. They have not left their father and their mother and joined with their wife or with their wives. There are some fathers like that. They said they are their husband. But if you are a true father, if you are a father, it means you are committed. And when you are committed, it means you are reliable. When you are reliable, it, it means that you are dependable. When you are dependable, it means that you focus on the things that are important. So if you are a, an husband and you still continue to go back to, hey, mommy, look at this. Oh, daddy, what can I do? Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. It means you are not following what the Bible put here. Therefore, a man shall leave his father. Leave. Not necessarily mean that they are not yet your father. They are still your father. They are still your mothers. They are your fathers. They are still your mothers. But you are going to leave this immaturity. You leave it when you are married. You become mature. You become responsible. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. So, uh, I believe that those that are listening to me are not going to take this message as a message to whip somebody. This is a message to make our lives better. If we put things in the right perspective, there will be peace in our surroundings. There will be peace at home. There will be peace everywhere we go. And we accomplish so much. First Timothy chapter 5 verse 8. But if anyone does not provide for his own and especially for those of his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. Now, I told you that to be a father, you have to be responsible, right? And you are a leader. If you are a man, you are a leader. And to be a leader means you will provide, you will protect, you will guide. You will guide your family. You will guide. In fact, if you are a man, you are a leader anywhere you find yourself, even in the church of God. And then if you are a leader, as a man and you are a leader, you are committed, you must be able to lead your family. You must be able to lead the church. You must be able to lead wherever you find yourself. Now, that leadership cannot start 
just outside. Because charity begins at home. The leadership where to train yourself and everything is your home. That is where you get to know how to do it. You start from there. If you cannot you know, you know, lead in your family, you cannot lead anywhere else. And one of those things that can make you to be an effective father, a real father, is to be able to provide. Am I talking to somebody today? I'm going to give you eight elements of commitment. And that will be good for everybody. Either you are married or you are not married. If you are not married, listen to these eight elements. These eight elements I'm going to give you, write it down, put it down somewhere. It's an acid test to see this person. If you don't find all these things in that man, don't go for that man. Do you get me now? I'm going to give you those eight elements. So, a man who is a father must be able to provide your wife can have money, your wife can be working, your wife can be blessed, but there is a blessing God attached to when a man provides. There's a blessing attached to it. The Bible cannot be broken. The Bible did not say if a man cannot provide for his household or for his family, it's like an unbeliever. He said it's worse than an invader. He, that person had denied faith. It means you have, I mean, do, do we read this together? Let's read some other versions. Let's read some other versions. Let me give you, let's read King James Version. It said, but if any, if any, provide not for his own, and especially, or especially for those of his own house, he had denied the faith, and it's worse than infidel. Let's look at New English Translation Version. It says, but if someone does not provide for his own, especially his own family, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. Worse than an unbeliever. If you are a man, you are here, you, you, you don't want to provide for your house. You are just a donor. You are not a father. That is the scriptures. I didn't write this down. I didn't write, I'm, not, I'm not blaming any of you. If there is life, there is hope. When God is speaking to us, he wants us to make changes. You got to be a man. You got to step up. If you don't have that opportunity, it's good. But you have the opportunity, you have the masculine, you are blessed and you cross leg. And you have that woman to run all over the place. You are not helping that woman. You are not providing for that woman. And you are born again. What kind of born again is that? So what example are you showing to your children? What example are you showing to unbelievers in the world? You must, see, when you provide, when you give, God will give back to you. It's like you got money in this hand. If you don't, if you don't release what you got here, what God has placed here, will not get engaged to this one. What God has put here, will not come back to this one. You got to release. When you release, you wait and say, God is going to bless you. When you are a man, you step up. You come and wait. You see how God is going to bless you. When you step up, your wife will. Do you know there is a special prayer? Our mothers, sometimes we pray. They look around. They look how you are doing. They begin to pray. They pray for you. Our, mom, our mothers, mothers they, look at, they look at this. Oh, this man. God, I thank you for this man you put in my life. They begin to pray for you. They ask for God's favor over your life. They ask for God's grace over your life. They ask for God's mercy over your life. It will, it will prolong your days. But when you run around, you run around, and the priority is not placed right. It is it's not of him that will it, nor of him that run it. It's of God that shows mercy. It's not how much you can run around, you can run around, you can run around, you can run around, that is important. But doing the right thing, putting the right thing at the right perspective is very, very important. The Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. I hope I'm talking to somebody today. And one thing that is important is that God placed leadership in the hands of us, of men. And when our mothers... I mean, let me say the first mother, Eve. When Eve fell and brought her husband to the same thing, 
When God came into the garden, was God looking for Eve? Was God looking for snake? He didn't, he was not looking for serpent. He was not looking for you know, Eve. Because he's all knowing. He knew Eve caused this problem. Eve was the one who you know, betrayed God's you know, instructions. But God asked Adam, where art thou? Because he was the leader. And look at the mess Adam put us here. Adam, Adam put us in a big mess. Since Adam did not step up as a father, because then you can say, oh, they don't have children, then, but your first child is your wife. You take care of her, you nurture her as a weaker vessel. Not that she's weak, but as somebody you, you just, you know, reach out to as a child, as your own child, and embrace her. And when you do that, you come and see how God is going to, you know, massively bless you. Because God is God. Amen. Now, so what is commitment? So leadership is commitment. So what is commitment? I got the dictionary meaning of commitment. It said, um, commitment is responsibility. Commitment is obligation. Commitment is duty, charge, liability, burden, pressure, undertaking tax, engagement, arrangement. And they put this uh, phrase, our commitment to our students continue undiminished. Dedication is commitment. Devotion is commitment. Allegiance, loyalty, you are loyal to your family. Faithfulness is commitment. Fidelity is commitment. Bound, adherence, attentiveness. Dictionary meaning of commitment. Commitment. Commitment is vow, promise. Pledge, oath, covenant, contract, part, deal, undertaking, decision, resolution, resolve, guarantee, assurance, affirmation. It's commitment. Amen. A man was created by God to lead. You are to lead at home. You are to lead everywhere you find yourself. Happy Father's Day. So fathers, don't think I'm you know, just pushing it and you know, sending all those things. But it's to help us so we can be uh, and live as God wants us to be and what God wants us to lead. So most importantly, you lead by example. And this is what I'm saying now. You lead by example. Because if you are, if you are a father in the house, your children are watching you. They are watching how you are treating your wife. They are watching. Look, if you say, Pastor, don't worry. That woman is a wicked woman. I love my family. I told you that, that woman, I have reservation. You cannot love your family if you don't love your wife. It starts from your wife. And it ends from your wife. All those children, they will go. It will remain you and that man. It will remain you and that woman. When you will be doing like this, you call the children, they are busy. They are busy. Is that your, that, that your man or that your woman? God forbid. If you grow to a level where you wear a diaper, it is that, oh yeah. If you get to that, yeah, don't, what are you talking about? Do you want to age? It's not, thank you, it's not a cause. Nonsense are talking now. It's not a cause. It's not a, you, don't, you want to see accident? No. Diaper is to prevent accident. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And you get to a certain age in life when you turn to 100, when you turn to uh, you know, whatever years you turn to, when you turn to 100 and something, those of you want to live long. Take 100 and something, 100 and something, and that something. That might be you know, something you have been using for years. Maybe it's a little weak. It is that woman that will take care of that. All those odor, all those accidents, we take care of it. Let me tell you the truth. You want the woman, your children to come and do that, they may be so busy with their own world. It is that woman. So, if you are saying, I'm leading. I love my family. Ay, 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 ay. And you don't love the first family, your wife. There's a question mark. Men, are you listening to me? Charity begins at home. 
Now, 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 let me now give you uh, what I call uh, the elements of commitment. The elements, and this is God, something we are going to. Now, this is not only for those of us that are married. It's not only for those of us that possibly um, we have children or whatever. Uh, it's not all also for those of us that are engaged to be married. It's also for ladies, those that are looking forward to, to marry and have a godly family. And it's also for men that are looking forward to marry uh, your own and live a peaceful life. This element I'm going to tell you, you can write them down. They are like acid tests, what you look into somebody to really know, not just I'm committed, I'm committed by mouth, but actually being committed in heart and in deed. Commitment. What are the elements of commitment? So what I put down here is the, the central truth in the element of commitment is priority. Priority. As a man or as a leader, being a man, you are a leader, and we are talking about um, uh, leadership is commitment. Um, where do you place your priority? If you are married, you are a man, your family has the highest priority. Hello? Now we are talking of the Bible now. The man will leave his father and his mother. He return with his wife. They will become the two shall become what? The highest priority is your family. And when we say your family, I let me put emphasis on it over and over again. The first member of your family is your spouse, your wife, or your now talking to every one of us, your wife or your husband. It's your first priority. So to secure your base. To protect your territory. Because anything you live around, anything can pick it. Hello? Anything you live, I don't want to expand. Anything you live around, anything, anyone can pick it. It's not useful to you. Somebody is going to pick it and brush it and make use of it. So, where do you put your priority? The first priority. The first consideration when it has to do with prioritizing you know, your everything is your family. After God, what comes next is your family. Amen? Amen. After God. And if you don't do your own thing in your family, you cannot do your own thing with God. In fact, God is not going to listen when you say, oh, I love you, God, I love you, God. And then you don't love your family? What kind of God do you think we're talking about? So, when we talk of priority, nothing, so, nothing should come between you and your family. Nothing. No one, nothing, supposed to come between you and your family. And when I'm talking of family, as a father, I'm talking of your wife first. So, what are the elements of priority? My sisters and my brothers that are looking forward to marry, put this note down. The first thing, the first thing, the first element is time. Time. Time is so valuable. When you spend that time, you can't get it back. You can have, you can go make more money, but time spent is gone. So you look at that man, you look at your husband, wife. Wives, are you listening to me? Mothers, are you listening to me? You, you, you look at this. Who do your husband spend most of his free time with? <laughs> Who do you want to spend your free time? If somebody is going to marry you and he has a free time, he doesn't want to stay with you with that free time. If he's doing it now, he will do it after you are married. Hello? If you love somebody, your heart is there. Your soul is there. Any small opportunity, you want to be with that person. If being with you is irritating, Titanic, ahead. 
Being with you. Being with you is irritating. Ah, it's repulsive. I will tell you the truth. There's a problem. That man cannot lead you. Two, communication. Do you put time down? So you are talking, somebody telling you, I love you, I love you, I'm going to marry, I love you, I love you. But he doesn't want to spend time with you. That love is question, he has a question mark. So, communication. Who do you communicate with most? Either face to face, either on the phone, either by text or by email. Secure your base, my brother. If your wife is communicating more and more with someone other than you, too much time other than you, hey, ah, oh, Lord, something is going to happen. Something is going to what? Secure your base. Amen? As a man, secure your base. Oh, I'm just working, providing for you. I'm providing for you. <laughs> Honey, it's because of you. I'm doing, I'm doing 24 hours. God will help us. Communication. Communication. Phone, text, email. Who do you like to send text to? Who do you like to send email to? When you're on your lunch, who do you call? I always know that when my wife is on lunch, she will call me. Or either I will call her. And if she doesn't call me, whenever she's getting to the car, she's driving home, she's going to call me. She will tell me all the day. I'll, be, I'll become an IT. IT. Because she will tell me a story about IT, story about computer, computer here, computer there, this one and this one, i become that. And she has become like city worker. For every story, oh, yeah, yeah, this permit is, yeah, 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 yeah. Some of you say, we don't, have, we don't have anything to say. That is why I didn't, I don't want to call that. We don't have it. You have many things to say. Communication. Whom do you communicate with? Do you put that down? Information. Put it down. Whom do you share information with first? <laughs> Information. You get one information. Who do you share this information with? And your your husband is sharing information with you. You are on your phone. Your wife is your wife is talking to you now. Or your husband is talking to you. You are where? Honey, what are you doing? I'm just looking at that WhatsApp. I owe WhatsApp with no WhatsApp you out of your house. Information. Whom do you share? You get one information. Maybe you, you got of uh, something that is beneficiary, something that you want us to take care. Don't do this. Don't go here. Don't. Who do you first give that information to? If you're a leader, whom, you, your, your family, right? But then who is the first? Your wife. Information. So those of you who want to marry, my sisters, my, my daughters or my children or my brothers, That man is not sharing information with you now. Don't think he's going to share it with you after you are married. Do you get me now? Maybe, God forbid. Opinions. Whose opinion do you take most? If you want to value opinion, which one do you value most? If you are my husband, let's say I'm a wife now. You know I'm a man. You know what I'm talking. I'm not going that side, okay? <laughs> if you are my husband, eh, I ask you for opinion. You look at, ah, this woman, she just got master's. She has got her PhD. She's asking me for opinion. If this woman continues like this, I may not be able to control her. And then you give me your own opinion. Selfish opinion. No, some men, they do that. They don't want to help their wife to achieve their dreams. 
They are thinking that, oh, if this woman gets more money, oh, this woman, she's going to, oh, she's going to have K-leg. Whereas, the success of your wife is your success. If your wife, ex- if your wife breaks through, it's your success. People will see you and say, oh, yeah, thank you. If the parent will say, oh, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. We give you what? High five. But there are some men, they will only give their wife's wrong opinion and they say they are father. What kind of father is that? You know this is a pit. It's, keep going, keep going. Keep. So that when I fall to that pit, they can say, you see, that's why I'm a man. I will not help you out. I just want you to fail so that I can help you. So, who or whose opinion do you value most? Decisions. So, I'm telling you, you can, that's why there is courtship. If somebody is t- trying to marry you, either you are a man, and then you see that there are some problems in this one, it's better to work out. To, because it's better than any other thing, okay? Don't say, oh, I'm, no, I, I've been waiting, waiting, let me, let me just manage this one. No. Don't manage. Don't do what? Don't manage. Don't, man, don't manage. I want to end, let me just endure. No, you want to enjoy, you don't want to endure. Decisions. So, who is that person that influences your decision most? Man, that's, those are the elements to say if you're a father. So if you're a father, if your family, they, they, they really, 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 really appreciate your decision or they influence, you, they influence your decision, you are thinking of your family. You know, women, they have that thinking. They, you know, what surely influence most their decision are, you know, their families or their children. There are some things they will have done, but because of their children, so did that decision, they, 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 they go for sacrifice. They go for sacrifice. But men, you know, I'm sorry to, I'm not beating you hard, I'm a man too. We just feel that, you know, oh yeah, yeah. and you're a leader? Who influenced your decision most? Your wife, your family, if you are going to take a decision to leave this country now, who, 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 how are you going to, what is going to influence that decision? I want to take a decision to quit a job or to get a job. What takes, what influence that decision? Amen? Or you are in a office, you are working in the office. You have opportunity to do something that can make you rich quick. What influence that decision? Do you think that, oh, if I go get rich quick, I may go to jail. So what will happen to my family? Does that influence your decision? Do you say, okay, if I'm just going to stay here and uh, just with this little thing with my family, it's better for me than to, you know. So what influence that decision? So as a leader, commitment. Those are the elements of commitment. Those are the artists, uh, acid tests to know if this person is a real leader because leadership is commitment. Leadership is sacrifice. You watch that talking. That turkey was ready to die. The one you watch, that turkey stood on the road for all others to pass. And then the last one, that a, a crazy driver can just come and, you know, kick, kick that uh, turkey off the road. Leadership is what? Sacrifice. Leadership is commitment. Leadership is responsibility. Leadership is, reli- are you reliable? It's reliability. We can continue to use all these words. Okay. Can I say another one? What is the number of that one? Six. Wow, people are following this one. Celebration. Tell somebody celebration. Who do you celebrate the most? <laughs> Who do you celebrate the most? Secure your base. If you are celebrating someone else other than your spouse, something is going to happen. Something is going to happen. You see, when people fall into error, it's not one day. It's gradually. 
you gradually build up some very serious things that can take your family off foundation. You gradually, who do you celebrate the most? If you need to praise somebody, who do you praise the most? So, uh, my sisters, you are courting somebody, and every time you meet, he's telling you story of one ex. Ah, I remember those old good days. Ah, you are, you are not you are not happy in that relationship. You are talking of in those days ah. when men used to be boys. <laughs> we see one brother jump up and roll like this. <laughs> when men used to be, and you are celebrating that past. Before that woman, you say you are a leader. Are you committed? Leadership is commitment. You let go that old good old good old days. I don't know why they call it good anyway. Are you with me? Leadership is commitment. If you are a man, you got to be committed to your family. Not all boys are men. Not all men are fathers. And not all husbands are fathers. Some husbands, they just donate and they move on. They plant, they plant the seed. Plant the seed. Plant the seed. Plant the seed. <laughs> There's somebody that used to, you don't know him. He used to help us here one time. Um, he will tell you all the time, oh, I have a daughter. My daughter is a sheriff. My daughter is a doctor. My daughter is this. And this man always go to jail. There was a time he went to jail. They just needed some few money. 4000 or so to bail him out. No one was ready to pay that money. And this man got, he was telling me the story of all his children. And he will never tell you any day they come to visit him. He will never tell you every, any day we go and visit them. You just have those children just on the paper. No relationship with them. No bond with them. Do you know what I'm talking about? I don't have to tell you names. They say the highest call in this country is Father's Day to jail. Highest call to jail in this country, statistically, is Father's Day. I, I don't know if they are true. I mean, I read the, stat the statistics. Father's Day. That one, they oh, baby daddy. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. You have to be committed. If you are not ready to be committed, don't, get, don't go into that journey. It's not just journey. You know, when people are dancing, when they are wedding, they are dancing, dancing. Ah, what is behind six is more than what is behind seven. Yoruba English. When you, after I finish, come and ask me the meaning. I, I don't know. <laughs> ask, ask, <laughs> ask our mothers here. Yeah. Ask them, those that are married, ask them. It's more than cutting cakes. It's more than wearing garments. It's more than fun fair. It's more than the ceremony. Praise the Lord. So, what number are we now? Seven? Are you serious? Okay. Seven? Okay. Whom do you share news with? If there is a news, you have a news. Or you have an experience. With whom do you have the most shared experiences? Who? That is number seven, right? Number seven. So I go to number eight now. Okay. Celebration. Okay, let me start again. First one is time. Write it down. Time. The second one is communication. Information, the third. Opinions. For the fifth one is decisions. The sixth one is that celebration. Right? And the seventh one is sharing news. Who do you share news with? 
and experience is right. Now, let me give you the eighth one. When you are thinking of going for a cruise, you want to get away for a vacation, who do you have in your heart that you go with? <laughs> you want to go for fun. You want to go for... You know, it happens. Some people, they will leave the real person and they are going on vacation. They lie. Oh, we are going on holiday trip. And they will go with someone else. Commitment. That man is not committed. He's not a father. When you are thinking of going on vacation... Who is in your mind? Who is in your mind? Your children? Your wife? The first person that should be in your mind will be your partner, your wife. Children can go. It doesn't matter. It's not, I'm not saying we love our children. But I met my wife before children. Hello? I met my wife before my children. On priority. My wife first. Now I'll tell you the truth. My wife first, even before my parents. After God, the Almighty, the next person can make me, can break me, can kill me. I'm telling you. You are sleeping. That woman can kill you. Not your parents. Because if your parents will kill you, they will have killed you. They will have done what? Long time ago. But that woman, ah, ah, you are sleeping. Ah. Even when you are not sleeping, you want to know a man who his wife. Ah. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Maybe I should stop here. Did that say so? I should continue? Okay, if I will continue, look, let me tell you, if you are a father and you are committed, because leadership is commitment, it's compared to how Christ is committed to the church. That's how God is talking about the relationship between a man and a woman, when it has to do with leadership at home, everything. As Christ loves the church, you're supposed to love your wife, which means as Christ laid down his life for his wife, you're supposed to lay down your life for your wife. For, for, for the church, rather. As Christ laid down his life for the church. I told you a story. As Christ laid down his life for the church, a man should be ready to lay down his life for his wife. I told you a story when back home in, uh, back home in Nigeria, there was a man, a, a businessman. He got two wives. Armed robbers. Armed robbers, they surrounded the house. In the middle of the night, the man got two wives. They surrounded the house in the middle of the night. You know what the man did? The women, they carry all their children in their various they did like this. The man went into the city, the attic. The man climbed into the attic. True life story. Attic of the building. The man went there and lied down there. And the man told the, the wives, don't, don't tell them I'm there. You don't want them to kill me. So I, I, I want to take care of you. I don't want to die now. So the man went there and lied down. The arm robber, they came inside. They started asking the women, where, where is your husband? Where, where, is, where is your husband? Where? They were checking. They were, decided to lie. We don't know. We don't know. Please don't kill us. We don't know. They ran to the old house, to whatever they want to take. They didn't injure the women, nor all the children. If I mention names, somebody will be here who know this person, but I'm not, I'm not going to mention, the person will not even know the person I'm talking about now, but once I mention name, the person will know, but I'm not going to mention name. Then the arm robber, they left. The man came down from the attic. The man first said, she want the law, she want the law, that is, have they gone, have they gone? The wife didn't want to answer him. They didn't want to answer him. But the man, they said, the man, the wife was telling all this story. The man, the, the man now came down, and was, they, they, the two women, they went to him and said, you see you, you see? You're supposed to protect us. The man said, protect you? I, I, I'm protecting you by protecting myself. <laughs> if I die, who will take care of your children? The man said. But in the actual sense, the man should be able to stand and protect the family. Amen? 
That's how it's supposed to be. Okay, let us. Let, let, okay. 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 Now let us read the Bible. Let's read this. Let's read this in the Bible. Let's read the Bible. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. Ah, okay. That is the truth. In the man should be able to lay down his life for his wife. You take bullet for her. Now, that is the Bible. I'm not talking, I'm talking Bible now. Okay. Let, okay, let's read Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. Give yourself for your wives if you are a responsible husband. Now, if you go to, if you go to verse, uh, verse 28. So husband ought to love their wives, their own wives, as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. Amen? Amen. It's a great mystery. This is a mystery. Apostle Paul said in verse 32, he said, this is a great mystery. This is a great ministry. If you look at verse 31 of that same Ephesians chapter 5, he said, for this, for this reason, for this reason I'm telling you, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. It's a great mystery. But I speak concerning Christ and the church. And he said, but verse 13 said, nevertheless, let each one of you in particular, so love his own wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. That is not a problem. They will do that. I'm talking of now. I'm talking of a normal woman, a normal mother. We we I mean, we all know they 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 do honor their their their, their husbands. Your wife is your best friend. If you are those of you um, uh, those of you that are praying for whom to marry. You want to make sure these elements are in that person's life. That person must be your best friend. He must be your best friend, your lover. If he's not your best friend, he will shit on you. I'm telling you the truth. He must be your best friend, your lover, your half meat. I know the man, the woman, is supposed to be half meat for the for the for the man, the, uh, for the man, but the man also. Must be there more than even help me. It must be your best friend, your, not just a friend, your best friend. Because you said you will spend the rest of your life with that person, right? You will spend the rest of your life with that person. I am not talking, um, you know, just like just talking. I know there will be situations or circumstances that uh, maybe this is not what is happening in some, some of us' life, but it's okay. God understands everything. He will make his grace abound. He will make his grace abound. And he will, help, he will help you. He will see you through. But if you are a man, I'm talking to you. Father, be a father, please. And a father has to be committed. Please be committed to your family. God is going to ask you. Time will fail me to go in and tell you more and more and more that I put down here. Because we have so many other things to do. But you will give account of your family to God. There is no doubt about that. Because when God came into the garden, he was not looking for anyone else. He knew that something happened. But he was looking for that man who was supposed to be the leader. Hail them, where art thou? So I heard your voice in the garden and I hid myself. Why did you hide yourself? Did you, did you hit from that fruit that I said you should not eat? Yeah, 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 yeah. But the woman you gave me, gave it to me to eat. That woman, you say, God, it's your fault. You gave me that woman. It's not an accident. The woman you have now is yours. Either by mistake or by error, stay there. Amen? It's yours, it's yours. Stay there. 
Or you can say, oh, it could be greener on the other side. Who told you that? If you go to the other side, it may not be greener. So the one you have now, do what? Stay with that one. Right now, as you are listening to me, love that person. Step up. Be a leader. Guide your family. Lead your family. Provide for your family. Protect that family. Leadership is commitment. Father, we thank you for this wonderful Father's Day. I want to thank you for the fathers in the house. Thank you for the excitement. Thank you, Lord, for what you have, what you have told us. Help us to step up you know, as men so we can lead as you want us to lead. If we do, this world will have been the best place to stay. Because charity begins at home. The whole problems we have in this universe started from home. If home is good, community will be excellent. If community is excellent, country will be great. If country is great, the whole world will be superb. But Lord, if the foundation is destroyed, what can a righteous, a righteous man do? So help us, oh Father, to live right. Help us, oh Father, to step up as fathers. Help us to lead as fathers. So we can follow your footsteps. As you love the church, you lay down your life for the church. Help us as fathers to love our families and lay down our lives for our family. That we are committed. That we lead. We are responsible. That we are reliable. That we are dependable. That we can sacrifice just for the cause of the progress of our families. Blessed be your name, O oh God. Help us help our weakness. That this, the weak shall say, I am strong. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen.